guys, what's going on? It's Slacker here coming to you with episode 6 of our duo dynasty that we are doing with Gold Glover 9. If you haven't checked out his videos, make sure you go check them out. Also, this week, make sure that you go watch his video because he has a game to play this week. I, however, do not. I start this week off with a buy, so we're kind of just going to go over a few things and kind of look at, you know, college players, that type of thing. So this video is going to be pretty short because we have a bye week. There's no gameplay in this video. So if you're looking for gameplay this week, I apologize. It is a bye week after our huge win last week. If you guys watched the game on the Monday night, the real actual game, you know that it was pretty crazy. Almost just like the game we played last week. If you have not seen that video, make sure you go watch it. I could not believe how it actually turned out. So it was a pretty crazy game. Loved playing it. About had a few heart attacks during it while playing it. So make sure you guys check that out if you have not seen last week's video. Last week's top players, Todd Gurley got it at running back for 22 catch or 22 carries, 83 rushing yards. He pretty much teared me apart, especially with those three receptions for 103 yards. Uh, AFC Offensive Player of the Week was Marcus Mariota. He threw 321 passing yards and four touchdowns. I honestly thought maybe we would get it, but it doesn't look like we got it. So, you know, it was well earned by Todd Gurley. Aaron Donald, Donald also got the NFC Player of the Week. He also definitely deserved it. He had three sacks. He definitely deserved it in real life. He had those two sack fumbles that ended up being returned for touchdowns. So Donald huge on the defense possession the rams had both the offensive and defensive players even though we beat them in overtime the afc defensive player is our own guy justin houston he had eight tackles three sacks huge day for him the next section we're going to go over is our bringing back of the players negotiating in contracts some of them i'm wanting to bring back honestly some of them i don't know if i want to give them the contract I would almost say like Ron Parker, if we did bring him back, it would just be bring him back to trade him. I'm not sure I want to lose a 79 overall if I could trade him. However, he's 31 years old. He's only 79 overall. I don't know how big of a trading chip he would be. And I don't know if it'd be worth the $8.24 million over the two year contract. So I'm not sure about him. Spitzer Ware, I don't think we're going to bring him back next year. We did just sign Williams the a few weeks ago at halfback for a little bit less money and one overall less. So we're looking at them. They're both 26-year-olds, so they're both young. However, I don't know if I can give him the $13.4 million he wants over three years. Orlando Skandrick is one of our best cornerbacks. He's wanting a $3.22 million over a one-year period. I'm not going to give that to him. We're definitely not going to try to sign him. This year, Demetrius Harris, same thing. Wants way too much over three years. Not going to sign him. Jarvis Jenkins, I think it's just a little too old to sign at a 73 overall. We could get a 75 overall for the age of 25 or something like that. So I'm not too worried about signing him. Jeff Allen, probably not going to sign him. Depends on how we do in our draft, how we do in free agency. Whether or not we could pick a few guards up or a few tackles up and bolster the offensive line. If we have to, we might have to come back and sign Jeff Allen. However, it's not something we want to do right now. Frank Zombo, too old to sign. We have enough young linebackers to be able to take those spots over. Especially like this guy, Nate Orchard. Not sure I'm going to sign him. I don't know, $1.13 million over one year. We might actually sign him to a bigger contract maybe a three-year contract if we can let's go ahead and try that i wouldn't mind signing him to a three-year i don't want to sign him for a year when it's only 1.33 million is what they want so let's let's up it a little bit let's go 1.2 and we'll give him a uh, 500k bonus so that's about it's pretty high actually he's winning 1.33 million dollars a year we're giving him basically 5 million for three years actually let's let's down this a little bit i don't think i want to do that let's do that seems fair we're gonna go ahead and offer him this see what he takes it i'm guessing he will yep he will take it so we signed another linebacker i love having young linebackers same thing with this guy he wants about a million a year he actually wants more than Orchard wanted. 
same age yeah i think we're gonna not do that just because he wants more signing bonus he wants more overall and he's two less overall and we got middle linebackers so i'm not really worried about that justin hamilton i don't know if we'll keep him i don't i it would probably be worth it it's only 800 000 or almost nine hundred thousand dollars so we'll probably keep him jordan devy we're probably not going to keep so that's who we're going to keep the rest of the season i still don't know about ron parker if we should just sign him and try to trade him or just let him go unfortunately d ford basically is leaving we can't get ready we can't sign him so he's one in the test free agency i'm hoping there's some other players in free agency we can pick up going over our scouting players again we're still looking for that offensive line i think we're about done scouting all of the offensive line guys we're looking at dieter from wisconsin michael jordan from ohio state wouldn't be bad i wouldn't mind having this guy from alabama oklahoma georgia a lot of these power people i like i like the power people because they're usually their strength is very high and that's pretty much all not all you want in a guard or a tackle you want kind of speed honestly with a guard because they're going to be pulling a lot but going over these guys it looks like we've completed all of them actually in the left guard category going over to right guard looks like we have a few people to find out so let's go ahead and find out how good these guys are we're starting to get down to kind of the people that so we're down to we've got all of our guards now figured out i'm not sure about these guys i'm not sure why they say first round talent when their stuff isn't very good so we'll have to kind of keep an eye out for them i don't know if it's like a glitch or if there's something showing up that i don't see like um like they're going to come in as superstars and they're going to progress quickly so that might be something that happens I also want to kind of look at the linebackers corners we need some young corners so I did look at some of the corners we got a few left to try to grab here I'm not sure we're gonna be able to do we might just have to do it and deal with it there is a lot of corners oh here we go that'll even out so used all of our points I'm gonna look at some corners not really honestly seeing anybody that pops out I mean C plus or C plus is good and everything but I was really actually expecting, you know, some B's, especially for first round talents. I'm not sure where all the first round talent is going, honestly, because if it's not in the corners, I guess uh, defensive tackle, right in, right in, quarterback, left tackle, wide receiver, quarterback, quarterback, defensive tackle. So pretty much the t the places we don't need is where the top ti or top talent is right now wouldn't mind getting Devin White. He'd be huge, huge middle linebacker. I don't think we're going to get him though with our pick, honestly, because we're probably going to be picking last. But there's some pretty decent guys down here that I wouldn't mind taking a look at. We'll deal with that when the draft comes. We might also try to trade up for maybe a corner or, you know, if he's still there at, you know, 15, 14, why not go get him? We traded up to get Patrick Mahomes and we all know how that's working out right now. We're gonna go ahead and do the weekly training here so you can see those as well. So the standings going in to week 12, our bye week. We are 10 and one, we are leading the NFL all together. In the AFC, we're first place, Texans second. Titans are in third place. The Browns surprisingly up here in fourth place at seven and three as well. Fifth place is the Ravens. Sixth place is the Colts. Patriots are down here at five and five. Some people down here, they probably shouldn't be. Chargers, Steelers probably shouldn't be down here. However, that's just how it's working out at this point. NFC is led by the Saints, their first overall in the NFC. Right now, Giants are second, six and four. 49ers, six and four. Cowboys, six and four. The Bears are five and five. Falcons are five and five. Cardinals, Lions, Seahawks, and Packers are all five and five. If you didn't watch last week, Gold Glover won his game, so he won that game. 
putting him at five and five, and that's going to actually tie him for first place in the in his NFC North division. He is also tied with the Bears and with the Packers, so still a lot of work to do. But that win definitely went a long way at getting him closer to the playoffs. Five and five is not a bad spot to be right now. He's just got to make sure he wins some of the remaining games, gets on a home winning streak. He does have four home wins out of his five, one home loss so he's definitely playing well at home which is good so after that big overtime win against the rams we do have a bye week this week then we go at raiders home versus the ravens home versus the chargers at the seahawks and then at the raider or home versus the raiders to finish out the season i honestly see us having maybe a few issues with the ravens the chargers uh, the seahawks might surprise us i don't know how the seahawks are necessarily doing this year However, I think the Ravens and the Chargers are going to put up a fight. So we got to make sure that we bring our A game. I'm not really worried about the Raiders. The Raiders aren't very good. I know they're kind of high in the division. However, we know their team in real life. And on the game, I think they've lost the last couple ones. So I'm not really worried about the Raiders. So, you know, I would be happy to finish with two losses, three losses this season. We did lose against the Patriots. But, you know, we'll have to see how the regular season turns out. I know this week's video is not very long and I apologize for that. We are on a bye week. However, next week we will be away at the Raiders. So we'll make sure we bring you that content. We are posting this on a Thursday. I know usually we post it on Sundays. However, with the Thursday night with Detroit, we went ahead and moved it up since I had a bye week at Detroit plays on Thursday night. So we're going to go ahead and post this on Thursday. There will not be a video out Sunday where this regularly comes out. However, we will be fall back into the normal workflow with Sunday releases for the rest of the season. So if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Also, feel free to hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss any other content coming to you from the Chiefs. Also, make sure you go over to Gold Glover's video and watch it as well. He does not have a bye week, bye week this week, and he is playing the Bears this week on Thanksgiving. Make sure you guys go check out that video. Also, feel free to hit the red subscribe button for him so that you can watch the rest of our duo season. I think it's been fun. Please comment down below if you guys like this or if you want to see something different brought to you or if you guys want to see more of it. Please let us know down below. Till next time, Slacker out.